The film begins with a married couple named Ed and Lorraine Warren preparing to perform an exorcism on an eight-year-old boy named David Glatzel. The Warrens were brought to the house by the Glatzel family consisting of Carl and Judy Glatzel, along with their daughter named Debbie. Debbie's boyfriend named Arne is in attendance to help the family, he puts David to bed and assures him he's a brave boy, but David tells him he doesn't feel brave because he's afraid, before he could answer, he hears a car pulling up. Only for it to be a pastor named Father Gordon. A few minutes later, everyone hears David screaming and his father breaks through the door, only to find him crouched in the corner of the bathroom. His father calls him out only for David to be possessed which leads him to stab his father. Ed grabs him and takes him downstairs only for the demon to try to fight back. They place him on the table and Father Gordon recites a prayer. Lorraine sees the witch casting a spell on David. Ed asks what she sees but she brushes it off and focuses on the boy. David exhibits extreme signs of possession, including contorted body movements, demonic growls, and supernatural strength. The demonic entity begins to cause physical disturbances in the room, such as objects flying and lights flickering. Debbie screams at David to stop it but it's clear that he's no longer in control of his body. Arne steps in and tells the demon to leave David alone. Ed tells him not to talk to it but unfortunately the demon manages to break itself free and attacks Ed. It stops his heart for a brief moment until Arne grabs the boy. He begs the demon to leave the boy alone and take him. The demon transfers itself in Arne and lets go of the boy. The house goes silent and Arne realizes he's invited a demon inside him. A few days later, Debbie wakes Arne up but he complains to her about letting him sleep till noon. She tells him she tried waking him but he was deep asleep. He changes the subject and suggests they should take the next step forward in their relationship since David is free from the spirit. Debbie promises to think about it but doesn't think they can manage with all the bills alone. Later on, the family prepare for lunch and Debbie asks Arne to bring her something in the house. He quickly goes in and pulls it out from the fridge, only to see a cereal box fall over. He checks to see what's the cause, only to see a rat run off. He carefully follows it and sees it running through a hole in the wall. He gets closer to survey the hole, only for a witch to put something in his mouth. In the evening, Father Gordon visits Ed in hospital and finds Lorraine waiting for him to recover. He tells her to go get rest but Lorraine is adamant on never leaving his side no matter what, stating Ed is home to her. The next day, Arne tries getting his machine going so he can cut the tree. Someone stares at him from the bedroom window. As he looks back the person is gone. Arne decides to go home early and tells Debbie he doesn't feel well. A few minutes later, his friend Bruno tries getting him drunk. Debbie checks on him and realizes his temperature is getting high, he quickly goes to the kitchen and tries cooling himself down. He hears Debbie screaming in the other room and quickly checks. He sees a distorted figure about to attack Debbie. He rushes to push her out the way but he's seeing things. Debbie is confused as well as his friend. He sees it coming to him and he quickly defends himself only for him to unalive an innocent man. Later, he's stopped by the police and the officer asks if he's okay. Only for him to turn around with blood all over him. A few minutes later, the police get to the scene and recover evidence. During the trial of Arne Johnson, the judge expresses skepticism about the defense based on demonic possession. He remarks that he does not recognize demonic possession as a valid legal defense. As they walk out of court, their lawyer pleads to the Warrens to gather up evidence of their claims, as she acknowledges that it will be an uphill battle in court to persuade the judge about Arne's possession but decides to trust the Warrens' judgment and expertise in the matter. Later, the Warrens go back to their first recordings of David's possession in hopes they'll find a missing piece to their puzzle. It takes them back to when the Glatzels first moved in, where David walks in the house and heads to the bedroom. He notices the bed isn't a regular bed he's used to. He plays around on the waterbed, only to feel something moving inside it. He panics and slowly tries getting off. He's grabbed by some mysterious hand he screams and luckily he manages to free himself. The Warrens get in the room and look for where the waterbed was, Ed looks under the carpet and notices a mark that they recognize. Lorraine decides to look under the house. As she crawls she notices something far ahead and carefully gets closer. She uncovers the object only to find out it's a witch's totem. Realizing it's what she saw in her vision the night when David was possessed, she quickly takes pictures of it and shows them to Debbie. They tell her that David was cursed but she's confused to why would someone curse a little boy. Father Gordon suggests they should ask for help from an old priest named Kastner. The next day, the Warrens drive to Kastner's house and introduce themselves. They show him a photo of the totem and tells them he's seen it before. Ed asks why would someone cast a spell on a little boy but Kastner tells him it's not about the why, but Satanists are only sent to the world to cause chaos. 
He asks them to come with him but Lorraine senses something dark and refuses. Ed assures her he'll protect her. As they walk in they find hundreds of ornaments belonging to Satanists. Father Kastner explains that he has spent much of his life studying the occult and investigating cases related to dark magic and demonic activity. Kastner shares his findings about a particular occultist who has been conducting dangerous rituals. He explains that this individual has been using witches' totems, like the one found under the Glatzel house, to curse people and bind demonic entities to them. Kastner confides in the Warrens that the occultist is his estranged daughter, Isla. He had discovered her involvement in dark magic years ago but was unable to stop her. Kastner provides historical context for the rituals and curses used by the occultist. He explains the significance of the totems and how they are employed to create a direct link between the victim and the demonic force, resulting in possession and supernatural occurrences. With his deep knowledge and personal experience, Kastner offers the Warrens guidance on how to track down the occultist and break the curse. He provides them with clues and insights that are pivotal in their quest to save Arne Johnson and uncover the truth behind the demonic activity. Elsewhere, Arne is cleaning his cell and his bucket gets pulled into the dark, as he reaches for it, something pulls it further startling him, the lights from his cell switches off and he sees his cellmate muffling words, a demon grabs him and luckily the guards walk in and apprehend him before the worst can happen. The next day, they meet up with a detective to ask about the totem. They make a deal with a detective named Clay to gain access to police information that could help their investigation. Ed and Lorraine Warren seek the help of the detective to obtain information on a similar murder case that might be connected to the demonic possession they are investigating, but the detective is skeptical about the Warren's paranormal claims and wants proof of Lorraine's psychic abilities before he shares any confidential information. The detective proposes a test. Lorraine must use her abilities to find a missing girl connected to the other case. If she can provide accurate information that leads to the discovery of the girl, the detective will give the Warrens access to the case files. Lorraine agrees and uses her psychic abilities to have a vision of the location where the missing girl's body can be found. She accompanies the detective to a forested area and based on her vision, guides them to the location. Lorraine's vision proves accurate as they find the body of the missing girl in the exact location she described. This demonstration of her abilities convinces the detective of the legitimacy of the Warren's work. Impressed by Lorraine's accuracy, the detective agrees to share the information about the other murder case. This includes details about a witch's totem found at the crime scene, similar to the one discovered by the Warrens under the Glatzel house. In the evening, the Warrens decide to go to the mortuary to examine the body that the police found, they break in and carefully look for the corpse. They eventually find it and Lorraine holds on the body in order to find a spiritual connection that could lead her to the witch that's causing these curses. She immediately finds it and is led to a dark tunnel, she looks around for any clues to where it is and hears a train passing, she explains what she sees to Ed, she then sees the witch summoning the demon to possess Arne. Lorraine refuses to let her complete the ritual and calls on God, that instantly breaks the witch's connection, they see each other and the witch asks her how is she doing this, Lorraine tells her that she's shown by God, she realizes that the connection works both ways. Meanwhile, Ed sees a corpse and tells Lorraine to break the connection but she's far gone into her warfare with the witch, as the corpse was about to attack her, Ed quickly pulls her out the way. Later on, Ed and his employee named Drew, try figuring out where exactly could the witch be located, they look through the town's map and Ed asks Drew where the first victim found the totem, he looks through an interview and says she found it in a box from college only to find out she went to college in the area, they realize that the witch also lives in the area, they remember Lorraine's description of the place she saw in her vision, as they go through the map, they realize there's only one house that's next to a river and train rail. Lorraine returns to Father Kastner's house for the second time, she seeks further assistance and specific information to help her and Ed stop the occultist. Lorraine directly approaches Father Kastner and explains the dire situation. She emphasizes that Arne's life is at stake and that they need specific information to track down his daughter and stop her rituals. She specifically asks Father Kastner if he knows where Isla, his daughter might be conducting her rituals. As she needs to locate these places to disrupt the dark ceremonies and stop the creation and placement of the witch's totems. But Father Kastner is initially hesitant to divulge more information. He is ashamed and saddened by his daughter's actions and struggles with the decision to expose her further. However, he recognizes the severity of the situation and the need to stop Isla. Kastner finally reveals the existence of a hidden tunnel system beneath his property that Isla has been using for her rituals. He provides details about the entrances and the layout of the tunnels, before she leaves, 
Kastner provides Lorraine with any remaining artifacts or tools that could aid her in confronting Isla. He gives her blessings and words of caution, knowing that the path ahead is dangerous. As Lorraine walks in, she's instantly connected to Isla and sees her unaliving her father, which shocks her and almost drives her to her knees, she quickly searches for Isla's altar, she carefully navigates through the narrow dimly lit tunnels. She uses a flashlight to illuminate her path, revealing the eerie surroundings. The walls are lined with various occult symbols and markings, indicating the presence of dark rituals. As Lorraine moves deeper into the tunnels, she begins to experience psychic visions. These visions are fragmented and disturbing, showing her glimpses of past rituals, the occultist Isla Kastner, and the victims who have suffered due to the curse. These visions help Lorraine piece together Isla's actions and intentions. Lorraine tries breaking the altar but she's too weak to do that alone, she tries getting away from Isla but she's quickly caught and Isla tries to unalive her, fortunately because of their connection, she's able to see a rock next to her and smacks Isla with it. Ed gets down and sees Lorraine running towards him only for it to be Isla blowing something in his face, she continues with her ritual which affects Arn and causes him to distort his body in a scary way. Meanwhile Ed is under a spell and tries attacking Lorraine, she pleads with him to snap out of it by confessing their love they share for each other. Eventually Ed snaps out of it and immediately breaks Isla's altar, by doing this they have weakened Isla's hold on the demon and the curse she has cast. The demon becomes enraged by the destruction of the altar, which it relies on for its power. Isla realizes she can no longer control the demon and it turns on her since she has failed to deliver a soul to it. Elsewhere, Arn is liberated from the possession, and the demonic influence over him is broken. A few weeks later, after Ed and Lorraine Warren have given evidence of Arn Johnson's possession during the trial, he is ultimately found not guilty by reason of demonic possession. This groundbreaking verdict is significant as it marks the first time in US history that a defense of demonic possession is used in court. Make sure to like and subscribe for more notifications. Until next time, see you soon.